But because I liked Intel Power Gadget so much, I was looking for a tool that was similar to Intel Power Gadget. Before I found this other tool, what I was using was either iStat menus, which I've been using for years and years, but it didn't have fine grain control into the processor and what the CPU and the integrated GPU were doing until later releases. For a while, I was just looking at the power metrics, which does exist on Windows based Macs. I just never used it. And so this gives you a snapshot. And I've used this before and showed it in another video I did on the thermal mods for the 2020 MacBook Air. Here, you could see the processor usage for both the efficiency cores, the performance cores, and then the amount of power used by the CPU cores, the GPU cores, the Apple neural engine, and then the total amount of power consumed by everything. This is what's been around for a while. In early 2021, there was this utility that appeared called uh, MX Power Gadget. It's an amazingly cool app, a slick design. It obviously is very true to, to the UI and Intel Power Gadget, which as of right now, Intel Power Gadget doesn't even exist anymore. I mean, you can still download it and use it on Intel-based devices, but I don't know if it supports the newest generations. So anyways, this is MX Power Gadget, and I was using it on the M1 Mac, and I began to notice some things that were surfacing on the M1 Macs that I was using it with, and then I got the M3 MacBook Air and I noticed something even more peculiar. I think it's important with any tool that you're using to make sure the data it's giving you is actually accurate. So here it is showing about 370 milliwatts. It's bouncing around 160, 150, maybe a little more because this is screen recording right now. So it's, but like this seems like really low amounts of power even for an M1 chip when I'm screen recording into it. But if I come over here and look at power metrics, it's actually not using that amount of power. It's using more than it's reporting here. And we're seeing 1.1 watts of CPU power, about 0.2 watts GPU power, and 1.3 watts total. This is off by almost a factor of 10. So I don't know what is going on with this. I thought it might just be the M1 Mac. Things get even more interesting when we transition over to the M3 chip on this M3 MacBook Air. If I open MX Power Gadget. Look at the MX Power Gadget that is running now on the M3. You can see that the package power is still quite low, 0.12. The package power is only at about one tenth of a watt. And I'm screen recording. I'm, let's look at what's going on if I were to go into power metrics. So I'll just open up terminal. And as it loads up here, we're going to see oh, what's happening here too? It is using much more power than what this is reporting. It's using 1.125 watts, and the GPU is using very little. This is 1.3 watts total compared to 0 0.17, 0 0.26. So something is not functioning properly in MX Power Gadget. Now I've seen this CPU power go up to two watts when MX Power Gadget is open. But if I close Power Gadget, I, I fully expect this to decrease, which is kind of concerning because you wouldn't think that something that is a activity monitor style thing to be consuming that much power to affect the actual power usage of the computer. So here we go. I'm going to shut down Power Gadget and just keep an eye on that combined power. And we'll see what happens. Oh. Mind you, I am screen recording right now, and we're down to 103 milliwatts. So definitely more than 10 milliwatts, right? I mean, and it's using all of its fancy encoders on the M3 chip that are also present on the M1 chip. But if I fire back up MX Power Gadget again, you're going to see the power jump back up again, which you'd expect as it's opening the app, but not that it would continue to actually show over one watt. That behavior got me a little bit concerned. So I looked to see if there were any updates, and for the longest time, this just said, you're up to date, 1.4 is the current and newest version available. And if I go to version history and go to the application, it hasn't been updated since the 7th of April, 2023. And so there was a bug fix where it says some M2 Max does not report properly the CPU temperature while at low load. So temperature, but not power. Um, the one final thing I wanted to do was to check it with an external power meter. Now, the meter... It is busy doing some stuff because I just restarted it because I had to plug it in so I can get the cord up here. Uh, so we give it a second to settle down and then I will start up power metrics. So this is running. Let's just get power metrics rerunning here. Uh, that's gonna fall over. Okay, that's my password. So do the thing, thank you. 
Okay, so I'm gonna hold this in place. Hanging around 22 watts, it's mostly the display and Wi-Fi and you know all the other stuff. So we're at 22. So what we should see is a consistent increase by about a watt to watt and a half when I launch Power Gadget. So here we go. 27, 26, 23. Mm. You can see over on the left that the CPU power is now at 1.077 watts, 1.14 and the combined power is at 1279 milliwatts it's going up and down a little bit but our wall power has gone up and just to confirm if i close this and it drops back down again mm, let's see what happens 23 24 21.5 21.6 21.4 oh now you can see the cpu power has dropped down to 28 milliwatts Okay, so you can see here the battery is fully charged, and if we look at what the power consumption is, it's about 10, 9 to 10 watts. Okay, nothing really else running. Now if I go and open up MX Power Gadget, we launch that. It bounces around, and we're at 10 watts. Ah, there we go. 10, 11, 11. And if I close it, this is kind of the more important test. Close it, what happens? 10, nine, yeah. Granted, this is a little less of a definitive test because the laptop is using much less power and it's gonna bounce around a little bit as it is doing things. To wrap up, something seems to be going on with MX Power Gadget, at least in the fact that when it's running, making the CPU do something. What that is, I don't know. And it may not even be a thing that MX Power Gadget itself is doing. It might be the way it's calling an API or something to that effect. The point I wanted to make is that I've just recently seen some YouTube videos using MX Power Gadget and then realizing what was going on with it from what I had seen over the past six months. Originally with the M1 iMac, I wanted to make this video to point out what I've seen and hopefully the developer can rectify this. Hopefully that is helpful if you are experiencing some weirdness when you're trying to look at stuff with MX Power Gadget. Power metrics seems to be accurate. It's a little wonky sometimes, but it's it seems to be pretty accurate. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Take care.